141 and question 142 in the last class and i hope these two questions are very much clear to you x uh, question 142 okay so now in today's class we will first of all talk about uh, this question question number 40 and then we'll move to the other question based on the same concept all right so we, uh, in to, to the today's point of discussion will be question number 40 140 and 140 uh, most probably 143 all right anyways let's let's quickly start with the question number 140 let's just first of all read this once so this question says that we have three partners just a minute there are three partner x y and z who used to share the profit and losses in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 2 the balance sheet is given bank balance is given 15000 debtor is 97500 then uh, stock is valued at 82500 fixed asset is there on the liability side we have the creditors then employees provident fund is there employees provident fund is a liability right workman compensation reserve reserve is a part of profit capital account balances of all the partners are given now question is telling us that why is retiring and at the time of retirement firm goodwill of the firm is valued at 112500 and why share of it will be adjusted into the account okay uh, of x and z who are going to share the future profit in the ratio of 3 to 2 all right so then we have the fixed asset to be appreciated by 20% the stock to be reduced by 75000 stock to be reduced to 75000 okay then by the paid amount brought in by x and z so as to make their capital proportionate to their profit sharing ratio so this is the same point that we discussed in the last class y is to be paid amount brought in by x and y x and z and uh, to uh, so as to make their capital appro uh, proportionate to their new profit sharing ratio okay we need to prepare the valuation account and the capital account of all the partners and the balance sheet of the new firm okay i hope question is pretty much clear to both of you ayan and alexander is there anything that is that you are finding difficult in this question sir Uh, what is the meaning of adjusted into the accounts in the first one? Adjusted into the account. All right. So you are talking about this. See, see. Uh, the, since the uh, uh, there is uh, one partner is retiring now, so when this partner will retire, we will have to find out his share of goodwill in the total goodwill of the firm, right? And when he will retire he will uh, he is required to be compensated and who is going to compensate that who is going to compensate mr y x and y x and z is going to compensate x and uh, x and uh, sorry x and z collectively compensate retiring partner so that is what this question is telling us goodwill of the firm is valued at 112500 why share of it need to be adjusted that means it need to be contributed by x and z collectively their profit sharing ratio is given so that means we have to find out the gaining and sacrificing ratio of the partner and depending upon the gaining and sacrificing ratio both the both x and z will sacrifice okay sir and understood their account will be adjusted means their account will be debited got it yes sir understood all right so let's just first of all start with the revaluation account since in this question question requires us to prepare the revaluation account then we will talk about the capital and the then the balance sheet so let's just quickly start with the formation of the revaluation account in this question revaluation I want all of you to try this question first. I want everyone to prepare the revaluation account for this question. If you have any problem solving it, or, or if you have any kind of problem, do let me know. 
then I'll I'll help you. Otherwise, just prepare the revaluation account. Tell me the uh, divisible profit and that will be transferred to the partner's capital account. I'm waiting for your responses. And meanwhile, let me also prepare the revaluation account for this question. <clears throat> Done, sir. Done, everyone else. Mariam, I've been. Just a minute, Alexander. Okay, so the first thing given in the question is the first adjustment is goodwill of the firm. Goodwill is not important for well, for the preparation of the revaluation account. Then fixed asset is to be appreciated. That is what question says, and this is relevant for the formation of the revaluation account. So if fixed asset is is being appreciated by twenty percent. That means we will increase the value of the fixed asset by twenty percent. So twenty percent of just a minute. Let me open my calculator. So this will be one eight seven five double zero. 
into 20 percent so this, this will be 37,500. That means there is an increase in the value of the fixed asset by 37,500. So we'll go to the revaluation account credit side and write down by fixed asset. Thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Got it? Is this clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Then we have the next item. The stock is to be reduced by seventy-five thousand. So stock is to be reduced to seventy-five thousand. Earlier the stock was at eighty-two five hundred, and we need to revalue it at seventy-five thousand. That means there is a reduction in the value of the stock by seventy-five. By 7500 right so we'll go to the revaluation account on the debit side this time and write down to stock 7500 okay coming back to the question uh it fourth adjustment is also not related to the revaluation so that means so this is it uh nothing much is needed to be done in this question so Let's move to the revaluation account and just see, see this time we will have a loss, right? We, we are, we will have a loss of just a minute, two loss transfer to mm -mm. not, not loss. Uh, we will have a profit now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to profit transfer to. Profit transfer to X, Y, and Z. How much will be the profit? 37,500 minus 7,500. 30,000 is the profit, and we will distribute it among the old partners in the old PSR, right? So, old profit sharing ratio of the partners were 5 to 3 to 2. That means 15,000, right? Then 9,000 and 6,000. Totaling this, we will get 30,000. Got it, everyone? Is this clear? Anybody having any problem understanding the revaluation account? So 37,500 on both the sides. Tell me if it is clear or not. It's clear, sir. <clears throat> then everyone, just tell me once you are done writing this so that we can move to the partner's capital account formation. Done, Maria, Mayan, Ebin, Alexander. You guys are still writing it? Sir, wait, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> done okay let's now move to the partners capital account we will now prepare partners capital account and in order to prepare the partners capital account we'll go back to the question and in the question First of all, see on the liability side, we have the opening capital balances of the partners are given now. 165, 84, 66,000. These are all the opening capital balances of the partner. So we'll go to the partner's capital account and write these value in the capital account as the opening balance. So in order to write down the opening balance, we record that on the debit side and write down by, by balance BD. Opening balances are 165,000, then 84,000, and then 66,000. <coughs> 
Got it, everyone. Is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Coming back to the question. Uh, let me see if any other value that we have to distribute among the partners. Yeah. On the liability side itself, we have workman compensation reserve, right? And see, there is no adjustment given regarding the workman compensation reserve. That means the entire workman compensation reserve remained unclaimed. If workman compensation remain unutilized or unclaimed, that means this reserve should be divided between the partner among the partners in the old PSR. So this time as well, we will distribute it among the partners and write down. We will record this on the credit side as well. We'll write down by workman compensation reserve, WCR for workman compensation reserve, 22,500. And we are distributing it in the old ratio. Why we are distributing it? Because the entire amount remain unclaimed. So, 22,500 into 5 by 10. So, X account need to be credited by 11,250. Then, 22,500 into 3 by 10. This will be 6,750. And for Z, it will be 22,500 into 2 by 10. So this will give us 4,500. Tell me everyone, is this clear, yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Everything from the balance sheet is taken. Uh, no, nothing else is there which need to be recorded in the partner's capital account right now only we have we have we need to record we need to do two treatments firstly for the goodwill and then one is for the transfer of the revaluation profit to the partner's capital account so let's do that quickly as well so we'll go to the partner's capital account and write down the by uh, profit of the revaluation account we'll write down we'll write it as by revaluation profit by revaluation account Revaluation account 15, 9, and 6,000 respectively for all the partners. 15, 9,000 and 6,000. Tell me, is this point clear, everyone? Is it clear, all of you, Mariam, Eben, Ayan, Alexander? Yes. Yes, sir. All right, then, then uh, only the treatment for the goodwill is still required. So we'll have to find out the gaining and sacrificing ratio of the partner. Then only we will we'll be able to enter the transaction related to the, we will be able to record the certificate goodwill. And uh, goodwill. Treatment of goodwill. First of all, we will find out the share of Y in the goodwill of the firm. Right. So we'll do this. Y share in goodwill of the firm. Goodwill of the form was, goodwill of the form is already given in the question. That is 1,12,500. And Y share is how much? It is 3 by 10, right? Y share in the form is 3.10. That means Y share of goodwill in the total goodwill of the form is 1,12,500 into 3 divided by 10 that is 33756 got it everyone yes now, sir. 
we will have to determine the gaining and sacrificing shares of the partner so gaining and sacrificing shares of the partner calculation of gaining share in fact since we already know that y in this case since y is retiring so y must be the sacrificing partner and all other partners are gaining partners so calculation of gaining well, let's also write it sacrificing shares however we already know the sacrificing shares x y and z and i'm sure that you are able to recall the formula for gaining and sacrificing share we tend to subtract the old, old share out of the new share yes correct old share minus the new share so new share was uh just a minute old uh, the new profit sharing ratio is three to two and old was i used to three to two five is to three to two that means five by ten three by ten and two by ten this was the old psr and new psr is three to two that means three by five for x and two by five for z and y is retiring so zero for y now we will calculate the gaining and sacrificing shares so for that uh, we'll take the lcm this will be 10 6 minus 5 that means 1 upon 10 then minus 3 by 10 for y right and <clears throat> For z, it will be ten into four uh, minus two. Four minus two. This will be two by ten. That means both x and z are gaining. Gaining, and only y is sacrificing. Right, everybody. Is this clear? Scroll down. Scroll down. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. That means we need to distribute the goodwill of Y in the ratio of one is to two. Since the gaining ratio is one by ten and two by ten, that means gaining share gaining share is One is to two. Is it clear, everybody? Yes, yes, sir. All right then. Now we'll, let's I let's uh, let's quickly. Sorry. Yeah, only Y is sacrificing because yeah, only Y, y is retiring. Yes. now let's just quickly pass the general entry so that it it makes that it makes uh, easier for us to uh, transfer the entries to the partners capital account so therefore i'm passing the general entry however it is not required in the question so we will pass the general entry as x uh, capital account will be debited since he is gaining now so x capital account debit z capital account debit Two, y's capital account, and the value of the goodwill was three three seven five zero three three seven five zero. This will be distributed among the partners in the ratio of one is to two. So three three seven five zero into one by three. So 
eleven two five zero for x and remaining three three seven five zero two two five zero two two five double zero for y. The goodwill adjusted. Between x and z, right? Now, see, the so general entry says that x account need to be debited, z account need to be debited to y account. So we'll go to the capital account, and on the debit side, we'll write down into the x column eleven two five zero. Since general entry. Was saying us to debit the partner's cap uh, X capital account, right? So X capital account will be debited by eleven two five zero, and Z capital account will also be debited by double two five zero. Double two five zero. Got it? And now we will write the name of Y. We'll write down two Y's capital account. Or Y's account only. You can also write that as well. Okay. And coming on to the credit side of the partner's capital account, we'll write down by X capital account by Z's capital account eleven. Eleven two five zero and two two five five. Is that five zero five double zero? I think it was five double zero. Yeah, five double zero. I'm sorry. Five double zero. Got it, everyone. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Everyone else, please tell me if the, if this treatment is clear to all of you or not. I hope everybody understood. All right, now now let's read the fourth adjustment of the question, which says that amount to be paid, amount paid, amount sorry, why be paid amount brought in by X and Z so as to make their capital proportionate to their Profit sharing ratio. So this is the same point that we were discussing in the last class. This question is saying that X and Y will be paid by X and Z collectively. Obviously, since Y is retiring, so who is going to compensate Y? Only X and Z will collectively compensate Y. And question is asking uh, asking us to adjust the capital closing capital of the partner in the in their profit sharing ratio. All right. So let's just quickly do that. For that purpose, we will have to first of all find out the total adjusted. Uh, we will have to find out the adjusted capital of the adjusted capital of the partners. So let me do this. For that purpose, we will have to determine the. We will have to prepare. Sorry, we will have to prepare a working. Group. We'll write down. Adjusted capital of the partners. Sir, we can't see the board. Alexander, you are saying something. Sir, we can't see the board. Can't see the board. The working note is adjusted capital of the partners. So, how do we find out the adjusted capital of the partner? Well, simply, how do we determine that? We simply subtract the credit side value out of the debit side value. So, total of debit side minus the total of credit. This is how you will be able to determine the adjusted capital of all the partners X, Y, and Z. And we will then total it to find out the total adjusted capital of the partners, or you can also call it total 
capital of the firm. Total adjusted capital of the firm. All right. Now let's just quickly look at the debit side of the partner X, Y, and Z. So for that, I'll I'll have to use the calculator. Just a minute. All right. So first of all, let's total the credit side of the. Think just a minute. And I I wrote the wrong formula. Credit side minus the debit side. This is the correct formula. Total of the credit side minus the total of the debit side. This is the correct formula for finding out the adjusted capital. Okay. So one lakh sixty five thousand. Plus eleven thousand two fifty plus fifteen thousand. So some total of the credit side for X is one nine one two five six. Similarly, we'll do the same thing for for the Y. It will be eighty four thousand plus six seven five zero plus nine thousand plus eleven two five zero. Plus twenty two five hundred. So sum total of the credit side of Y is one thirty three five hundred. One thirty three five hundred. And same will be done for Z as well. Sixty six thousand plus forty five hundred plus six thousand. So this is seven six five double zero. Seven six five double zero. Hmm. Are it everyone? Is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Clear. Tell me. Okay. Now we will go to the formula and write down these values. This is the sum total of the credit side for all the partners. Huh? So total of the credit side for partner A was partner X was one nine one two five five zero. Right, for Y it was one three three five double zero, and for Z it was seven six five double zero. Now we will subtract the debit side values. So on the debit side, tell me the value we have got on the debit side. Uh, on the debit side, we only got eleven thousand two fifty for X. Eleven two fifty no. No value for Y, and uh, for Z, tell me, Alexander, what was the value? Sir, twenty-two thousand five hundred. Twenty-two five hundred. Okay. Quickly subtracting this, we will get the adjusted capital of each partner, and then we will do. We will just total it. So one nine one two five zero minus eleven two five zero. So this is one lakh eighty thousand. Then we'll do the same for y. It will be one lakh thirty three thousand five hundred since there is nothing to subtract. Then seventy six thousand five hundred minus twenty two five hundred. This will give us thirty four thousand. Now totaling this, totaling all this, we will get the total adjusted capital. So fifty four plus one three three five double zero plus one lakh eighty thousand. So this will be three lakh sixty seven thousand five hundred. Tell me, is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now see, to, we we found out the total adjusted capital of the firm. Now, all we need to do is distribute this among the partners in the new profit sharing ratio, right? So, new capital. Of X and Y, new capital, or you can also call it closing capital. New capital for partners. Hmm. 
new capital of the partners will be for x and z this will be determined by simply multiplying it by their new psi that is 3 is to 2 right so in 2 3 divided by 5 okay, by 5 multiplied by 100 so 2 lakh 20500 20, right this this will be uh, 2 lakh 67500 into 3 upon 5 so this will give us give us 2 lakh 20500 20, and uh, then 367 367500 into 2 divided by 5 will be 1,47,000. Right, everyone, is this clear, yes or no? Yes, sir, clear. Yes, sir. Okay, just a minute. Now see, uh, just note this down everyone. Anybody want me to scroll up or down, please let me know. Once you are done writing it, then we will move forward to the next point. Just tell me if everything is clear or not. If anyone is having any doubt, uh, Mariam is saying, can you go to the partners capital account? Just a minute, Mariam. Give me a moment. I'll scroll up. Let everyone write this. Ayan, Maria, uh, Ayan, Evan. Just tell me if you are done writing this so that I can scroll, scroll up. Yes, sir. sir, the total adjusted capital you have calculated in the new profit sharing page, right? Yeah, we just covered this in the previous class. No? Abel, that is your, ah, yes. what are you asking? Yeah. All right, then. So just let me just scroll up. Let me write down these value into the partners capital account. So this will be our closing balance. Closing balance by we'll write down by balance by balance by balance c right and the value will be two lakh twenty thousand two lakh twenty thousand five hundred for x And for Z, for Z, it was one lakh forty seven thousand. Right? And what about Y, sir? Y will be paid in cash as question requires us to do. Y will be paid by cash. Cash account. How much? One lakh thirty three thousand five hundred in complete settlement. One lakh thirty three thousand five. That is what question requires us to do. Why need to be paid by X and Y, X and Z collectively in cash. All right. Now, now let's total the uh, partner's capital account one more time. And whatever the balance difference will arise, that will be transferred to the cash account. That means that much of cash need to be brought in by X and Z. Or let me, let me do this right here. So just a minute. See, we just we just found out the new capital of the for the partner right so let's just quickly also find out how much cash both the partners will have to brought in to to uh, adjust their closing capital to 2,20,500 and 1,47,000 so cash required to be brought in or amount required to be amount required to brought in by partners how much amount both the partners will have to brought in to maintain their capital as per the new psr so amount required will be 
amount required how do we find out amount amount required amount required equals to new capital right minus the adjusted capital of the partner we understood this point yesterday as well i'm sure that nobody is having problem understanding this so new capital for x is 2 lakh 20 thousand 500 and adjusted capital was adjusted capital was 1 lakh 80 thousand right 1 lakh 80 thousand so let me just subtract it that means x will have to bring in how much 1 lakh sorry 2 lakh 20 500 minus 1 lakh 80 thousand that means x will have to bring in 40 thousand more right this is the amount that x is required to bring in assuming that he will bring this amount in cash is it clear an amount required to be contributed by z for that as well we will apply the same same formula new capital minus the adjusted capital new capital is 147000 and we will subtract the adjusted capital that was 54000 right and whatever the difference will arise that will be the cash required to brought in by z 147000 minus 54000 So ninety three thousand of cash is required to brought in by Z. Is it clear, everyone? Tell me if it is not. Alexander, Hiba, or uh, Abin, Ayan, Maryam. Sir, so it's clear. It's clear. So we'll go to the partners' capital account and. Uh, Just remember these value forty thousand five hundred ninety three thousand, and on the since both the partners have to contribute this amount, na. So that means they will have to bring in sufficient amount of cash. So there, uh, they will further introduce by cash. X will have to contribute forty thousand five hundred. Forty thousand five hundred, right? Forty thousand five hundred and Z will have to contribute uh, ninety three thousand. Right, everyone, is this clear? Now, when you will total this, total both the sides of the capital account, account should tally. So the, we should get seventy six thousand five hundred in the Z credit uh, debit side. And then one three three five double zero, and one nine one two five zero. So this is how we will prepare the partners' capital account. I hope everything <clears throat> is clear to you. If anyone is having any kind of problem, please tell me. Excuse me, sir. Hmm. Please tell me. Sir, after we write this uh, cash on the credit side, will will the amount change? What amount change? In the document. Uh, yes, the see that one lakh ninety one thousand two fifty. The the balance is no. Will they change also? Oh, uh, just a minute. Yeah, it will it will change, na. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Just a minute. I think I we shouldn't write this. I totally need just a minute. We should just we should totally debit side and credit side after writing all the values. So just a minute. Yeah. Now when you will total account both the both the side should tell you. Let me just do that. So on the debit side on the credit side. Said <clears throat> we should get twenty-two thousand five hundred plus one forty-seven thousand five hundred, and uh, 
question one six nine five. Yeah, so one sixty nine thousand five hundred for Z. And on the credit credit side as well, you should get one sixty nine thousand five hundred. For why uh, the amount will be, I think it will be same one three three five double zero. Right, and for Z. uh it will be 165000 plus 11250 plus 15000 plus 40500 so this will give us 231750 and let me check the debit side as well 11250 plus 220500 so we are getting the same answer on both the side so the, now this is correct Sir, can you scroll? So basically, we need to total the debit side and the credit side after recording all the items. You want me to scroll down, Abhin? Yes, yes, no, yes. To where do you want me to scroll to? Sir, only this much the amount. Okay. Apart. <clears throat> all right. Now let's just quickly prepare the. Balance sheet for this question. Then everyone, moving on to the balance sheet. All right. So first of all, there is bank bank balance is given, right? Bank balances are given. So bank balance is how much? It is fifteen thousand. There is no change in bank. Bank balance will remain same at fifteen thousand since there is no adjustment regarding the bank given in the question. All right, and uh, coming back to the question, on the asset side we have the debtor. There is no change in the value of the debtors as well. So we'll write down the full value of the debtor: ninety-seven thousand five hundred. Nine seven five double zero. And then we have stock. Stock is stock was revalued. Now stock reduced to seventy five thousand. So the new value of the stock will be written in, in on the asset side. Stock seventy five thousand. After that we have fixed asset. Fixed asset also appreciated by one eighty uh, by twenty uh, twenty percent. That means one eighty seven thousand five hundred plus. Twenty percent, so that means thirty-seven thousand five hundred plus one eighty-seven thousand five hundred. So this is two lakh twenty-five thousand. Two lakh twenty-five thousand. Take this. One eighty-seven thousand five hundred plus twenty percent, we will get two lakh twenty-five thousand. <coughs> Clear, everybody. I think uh, nothing else is required to be recorded on the asset side of the balance sheet since we recorded every item. On the liability side, sundry creditor remains unchanged. So, sundry creditors will remain unchanged. And 
other than census creditor we have employees provident fund that will still be reflected on the liability side since there is no adjustment given regarding the employees provident fund 5250 employees provident fund and the amount was 5250 Amount of creditor was three nine seven five zero. Right, everyone, and then only capital account balances are required to the return. So capital account balances were for X and Y. For X, the capital account balance is two lakh twenty thousand five hundred. Two lakh twenty thousand five hundred, and for Y, it is one lakh forty seven thousand. Totaling this, we will get two lakh twenty twenty thousand five hundred plus one forty seven thousand. We will get three lakh sixty seven thousand. Right. Now we will tally both the sides of the asset and liability, and hope that both should get tally. So first of all, let's total the asset side: fifteen thousand plus nine seven five double zero plus seventy five hundred plus two two five triple zero. So it is three lakh forty seven forty five thousand. Three lakh and forty five thousand. Now totaling the credit side, we will get three. Uh, uh, I think we are making some mistakes in there. <clears throat> Just a minute. Three lakh twenty five thousand plus seventy five hundred plus ninety seven five hundred plus fifteen thousand. It is three lakh forty five thousand. That's right. Mistake. Oh, value of the stock is not seventy five thousand hundred. It's seventy five thousand. So seventy five thousand. Now, when you will total it, you will get fifteen thousand. Plus ninety seven thousand five hundred plus seventy five thousand plus two lakh twenty five thousand. You will get four lakh twelve thousand five hundred. Four lakh twelve thousand four lakh twelve thousand five hundred. And on the liability side, three nine seven five zero plus five two five zero plus three six seven five double zero. We are getting the same answer on both the sides. That means we did the question correctly. <clears throat> Understood, everyone? Yes, sir. Clear. Yes, sir. Anyone have doubt? Mariam, Ayan, Eben? No, sir. Is there any doubt? Hey, no. Oh, okay then. All right. So this is it for today's class, guys. I'm giving you one question for your homework as well. Uh, just a minute. All right. Please take the screenshot of question one forty three. This question is also similar to the previous one, but There is one different point here. Point number F adjustment F is little different from the previous one. However, we have already discussed this kind of question in the previous class. So I'm assuming that you will be able to solve it. Just take the screenshot. This is your homework. If you are not able to solve it, we'll be solving it together in the next class. Got it, everyone? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now, so this is it for today.